Welcome to the FET Energy Skate Park Challenge. So what you'll need to do to participate in the challenge is you'll need to go to find the FET Energy Skate Park, and all you have to do is do a Google search for that, and it'll pop right up. And when you jump in, you'll actually click on the playground setting, and you'll get your first window looks like this, and you'll be able to create whatever shapes that you'd like. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So first of all, our settings for this, we're going to be, you can choose whatever mass you'd like. Um, we're going to set the friction down to zero. I'm going to select the ability to fall off the track rather than being connected to the track. And then you can just pull up some track pieces and you can just design a loop-to-loop -loop feature. And I'll just grab a few of these and just create a nice circle for me to go through. And if you run out of parts, you can just add on some more. So here's a rough loop. So I'm going to start my skateboard. I'll start him over here. Let go. And see if he makes it through. Not even close. He needs some more energy. So I'm going to start him up high. And now let's see if he makes it through. Well, that's easy. Whoops, and he fell off. Let me grab him. All right, so now, that was easy enough. Now, the question is, this is my height. Let me throw a grid in here so you can see. Um, my original height, let me start it up over here, for example. And let's make sure he doesn't fall off again. I'll put this up here. So here's the challenge. It's really not hard to get him to go through a loop. What's difficult, though, is to get a loop that's as high as your starting point, or at least close to it. So if I expand my loop to make this a larger loop, let's see what happens. Let me see if I can get the loop together before he comes back. It's not a bad loop. I got going here. Sort of circular. It was going up, 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 up. Ah, but he falls off. Now, of course, I started up here at around 8, and so certainly I wouldn't expect that I can go above 8, so I can try to adjust this height a little bit. So it looks like I'm, I'm at 8 again here. Let's try it now. Let's get him up as high as possible. Now let's see if he can go through. Once again, no luck. All right. If I drop down the height of the track a little bit, maybe drop it down to... Maybe I'm down to seven now. Let's see if he makes it through seven. Whoop, he still fell off, but he came close. So your job is, how can I get this loop so it's up at least 95%? So really, he should be up very close to eight meters and still be able to go through the loop. So I'm trying to make this nice circle here so that he can go through this loop. The problem is when he gets up close to 8, he ends up falling down. Fortunately, he doesn't get hurt. You can actually you know, use your pie charts if you'd like to help yourself. Um, there's a speed indicator you can have. You can try changing the mass of the person to see if that helps you. Uh, but can you get him to go up, let's say, this high where you're just a fraction below the 8 or actually at the 8 and make him go through so that's the challenge, and that's actually challenge number three, is can you design a loop-to-loop -loop that goes nearly as high as the starting point, where nearly is at least 95%, if not higher, compared to your starting point. The fourth challenge here is can you do more than one loop-to-loop -loop that goes nearly as high as the starting point? So that's an interesting thing to try. If you succeed in number three, maybe you can succeed in number four. For the physics students out there, who challenge one and two are really interesting challenges. Can you calculate the starting height for a skateboarder such that they barely make it through a circular loop of radius r? So they've got to be safe going through that loop. In other words, not leave the track. So the second physics challenge is to calculate the height you would start at such that when you got to the top of the loop, the scale you're standing on on top of your skateboard reads your normal weight. 